Color, color, color. It is something newbies screw up all the time when designing user interfaces for websites or apps. So we're gonna take this design here as seen. As you can see, it's just kind of like a very just dry sort of monochromatic chromatic approach. And we are going to create many different iterations um, of this design in terms of color, both with monochromatic approaches and also ways to integrate colors in a wide variety of scenarios. So if you have an issue with color and knowing how to apply it correctly, then definitely this video is for you. So make sure to subscribe yet if you haven't and let's get started. Now, wait one second. If you're interested in really learning how to design awesome user interfaces, which of course goes beyond just understanding color, like in this video, definitely check out designcourse.com. I just recently relaunched it here on January 4th after working on this for over a year and a half. And it's a completely custom system where you learn UI, UX design through over 16 hours of video, also 38 interactive user interface design tests, which are really fun. You can actually play some of them right here by click clicking play now and also mentorship. So you submit design projects and I will personally review what you've done. So definitely make sure to check that out. Top link in the YouTube description and let's get started. All right, so here's our design. I'm gonna make this file, by the way, right here as it is available. If you wanna follow along, I think if you really wanna to try to get the most out of this and, and actually see on your own monitor, you know, what things look like, I think it's a good idea. Um, so check the YouTube description for that. So um, we're gonna start off with a monochromatic approach. I'm gonna show you several different ways to make this monochromatic, or in other words, just 100% black or 100% white. And then we'll also do the same thing with color in a little bit after uh, a little bit after that. So I'm just going to replicate this. We're going to put this over here. This is going to be our first example. So if we wanted to make this monochromatic in absolutely black and white with no shades in between, we have several ways to do this. There's a lot of variations that we could use it for you know the elements that we have here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these cards and make them black. So high contrast obviously I uh, you know between this white background and these black cards now of course we need to see the text so what we're going to do is make them 100% white and then these we have options uh, we could just make them white and then we'll only see half of the circle that still works just fine and then finally we'll take the, maybe this little element up here and we'll make that black and this right here works fine I'm going to leave these kind of just like a watermark I mean we could go ahead and make these all the way black as well, but I wouldn't advise that because they're not important elements. Uh, you would, you could also say that this little head, this little header, uh, little graphic um, by the, the 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 title isn't important either. But I think it, it goes hand in hand. But these elements strictly should be watermarks. So I'm just going to revert back, and now it looks a lot better. They're too distracting otherwise. Um, so this works here just fine as it is. Um, and of course you have a lot of variations that you could use based on your elements. So for instance, if we could also perhaps wanted to take these and maybe add a stroke of a few pixels, this works as well, nothing wrong with that. And what if we wanted to have uh, a dark mode version of this? All right, well, we'll take uh, some of our, our dark elements here and we'll make them 100% white. Of course, they're not gonna be able to see certain things now. Um, we'll take the background, we'll make it uh, black here. So we'll change that. We'll get our type and we'll make that, of course, black now. And we'll make this one white. All right, um, we could also take our background elements because they were black, we don't see them anymore. We can just push them up and also maybe increase the opacity. And there we go. We have a very quick dark mode version made out of this and it works quite well. And like I said before, you also have options. You don't only have to use this variation. For instance, we could take these uh, little circular containers and we make those black. We can make these elements, of course, sitting in the foreground. The icons, uh, where is that? There, it is. there we are. Make those white. And you just have so many options, uh, clearly. And of course, this is pretty much 100% monochromatic, no grays in between uh, approach. Now, what if we wanted to utilize uh, the monochromatic approach, except we can utilize grays and stuff. Um, so we could take these right here in this context and maybe drop them way down. So the card containers don't have to be, the card, the card, a card container in and of itself does not have to be really high contrast based on the background on which it's sitting. Uh, the only thing that has to be high contrast are elements that you read or icons that you have to use or something like that. So 
we want to make sure we can take our uh, our color. We can go black, 100% black. This works fine. Or we could come up, but coming up right around here, not enough contrast. How do you know what is enough contrast? By the way, well, uh, there's something called the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or the WCAG for an acronym, and they're basically guidelines on minimal read readability uh, in terms of contrast. And so how do you know what that is? Well, there's a plugin. So if we select a piece of type in the background on which it's sitting, so we have to select two items essentially, right click, go to plugins. Now, of course, if you don't have this installed, you're going to have to install this extension. Uh, just go to click browse plugins and community and then do a search for Stark. There's a, a extension called Stark Contrast also available for Adobe XD. Um, and it's right here after installing it, you can just come here, click, click check contrast. And it's going to tell us we have 11.7 to one contrast ratio, which is actually pretty high. You need at least for normal text, 4.5 to one. And that's called double A uh, for triple A. You want at least seven to one. So uh, if we take this and I change this here to something around here, and then we check again, 3.9 to one, it's not quite 4.5 to one. This is not enough contrast. So if we're dealing with, uh, when we start to deal with color, uh, not just monochromatic approaches, it's still important as well to ensure contrast. And especially when we're dealing with type that is normal text, which by the way, what is normal text? Uh, that's es essentially your font is at least 16 pixels with regular uh, weight or heavier. And then larger text, or, uh, large, larger text, you don't have to have as much contrast because it's just consuming more of the screen and it's easier to read. Um, so you wanna make sure you have good contrast always. So we don't have to go black. Like I said, you can, you can come up here. Um, here, let's take both of these, go back to wherever we were before. And this isn't completely black. Uh, it still works well. And many times you wanna avoid using 100% high contrast for your type. Um, so this right here is an approach that completely works. Um, one approach that I like using uh, in this context when we have cards or we have containers on a background like this uh, is we take the background itself of the actual layout and we'll come down and maybe push it just slightly down right around there. And then I take the card containers and we make them white. All right, now this case, it looks a little strange uh, with these semicircles. So we could just make that the same background color. And this here works as yet another approach as well. Now, of course, you could do the same thing where we're using shades with a dark mode background as well. Uh, so what we can have here is our cards. We'll take those, uh, maybe we'll take these as well. And we will push them down, just up, push it up rather. Let's make sure we have the correct area select. There we go. And maybe we'll come up just slightly. Now, of course, we can't see anything now, so we need to take this ticker fill. We put this all the way uh, up to white or down here somewhere. But again, you still have to make sure you have proper contrast and you can use that plugin to help you. So at this point, we can now select these. We can make them white. I, and this works as well. All right, so high contrast in this column down here in these four examples. And also when we're talking about at least the card containers or the card backgrounds, these are low contrast elements that also work very well. All right, so now that we've worked work with just, you know, black and whites and shades between, what about actually introducing color? And of course, as you would expect, there's many ways to introduce color. So let's take this example right here. Let's say if we wanna have, uh, we wanna introduce color. There's, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, the first thing that we could change in terms of a color, maybe we'll have like a primary color and we'll just use one color throughout this particular approach. So let's come over here and let's say our primary color is maybe right around here. All right, that's 9C1EFF for the color hex code. All right, so maybe we wanna change these icons and we'll use the icons, uh, that color for the same icons. All right, so in this context, this works, in my opinion, pretty fine, but it's a little strange with these gray uh, backgrounds. We don't always have to have a background color for our card containers. We can go ahead and remove that and add a stroke instead. And the stroke, we can either have high contrast like that, or we can take it down with low contrast. We don't have to have high contrast for something like a border or a stroke because it's not something that people need to read or be able to use. It's just there as a subtle element. 
All right, so this here works. Uh, and also, we don't even have to do anything with the uh, circular containers of the icons because the white space from here to here still looks good in my opinion. We don't even need to use anything like that. Now let's come down here and do another iteration of how we can apply the same color. So we'll take these and we will make those white. We'll take the backgrounds this time and we'll make them this color. All right, so this works. It, I mean, there's good contrast. We could see the icons clearly, clearly um, and there's nothing wrong with it. I, it's just another approach. So the, as you, you'll, you'll start to understand, there's a lot of subjective creativity involved subjective as in it's not necessarily 100% or 100, uh, right or wrong. Uh, if There are certainly objective uh, design decisions that you can make and that really falls in the realm of contrast, especially when we're talking about type and also color. Now, um, let's take this example here and we'll come down and let's say for instance, you have it in your head that you want to give color to the actual card backgrounds when we already have color that's you know going to be sitting on top of it or adjacent to it. Um, so let's get rid of the stroke and then we'll add I, a color option here. So if we wanted to do this, this is going to be probably pretty ugly and a little bit just too much. Uh, a little bit, it would be quite a bit just overbearing. So if we take these, maybe we'll make these white and we're going to try to make this work, but you're going to find that too much high contrast color could be problematic. So I, for these selection colors, just make it um, either this color or we can make it black. This is just, in my opinion, a little bit too much. I don't really like this approach. I'd rather, if you're gonna use color, use it in a more subtle manner. So I wouldn't really advise uh, taking this approach. Now, one thing I will say is you can, for instance, actually, let's just uh, replicate this one. You can certainly use color uh, on a dark background. So for instance, if we take this, uh, we go ahead and make this black and Let's take our card containers. We'll get rid of the stroke and we will add a fill this time. Uh, for this time, the fill will be just, just kind of like this. We'll make these white real quickly along with this type. And this works uh, quite well as well. So I uh, certainly the same concepts apply whether we're dealing with a light mode or a dark mode. Now, what if we wanted to integrate or introduce rather more colors uh, rather than just one color here, like we've been uh, working on. All right, well, there's a really cool method or approach uh, with pastel colors that I think works and looks very good. So I'm gonna take these elements right here, we're gonna make them black, and then we're gonna take our little circular containers, and we'll go one by one, by the way. Um, and actually what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll just make them all three the same color initially. So when I say pastel, uh, what we're gonna do, based, by the way, make sure you have, instead of RGB selected, HSL for hue, saturation, and lightness. Um, and we're just gonna come out right here, somewhere in this area, kind of in the middle, but towards the top in the lighter values. Um, as you can see, we for our, our uh, saturation value, we have at 44. Uh, you wouldn't wanna go too, too much higher for that value. Like when we push it to the right, that value increases. Uh, for pastels, we want to work right around here or here. It's pretty desaturated, but essentially for the saturation, you're just taking color out of it. And that's what that middle value is. So somewhere right around here works pretty well. And then what we can do when we have HSL selected, we can just adjust the hue slider right here to choose different colors. And it works very well. So we'll come over here and maybe for this one, I uh, will grab one of these, but also just drag that hue slider over more just to create four different colors. And this works excellent. I really love this approach uh, as a way to, to introduce color. Now you can do the same thing um, up here. So if we take these back to 100% with these little icons, now clearly too much contrast, like I said before, you would not wanna do something like this. Um, we can take one of these colors here and then we can just take each one of these individually, we'll ungroup them, and we can start changing the hue slider. Now, I still think there's too much contrast personally on these elements myself. So what you would wanna do is if we backed up, select all of them, we can go ahead and we could just change the opacity as well afterwards. So if I go back, and I'm just gonna change a few, I won't change all of them, so just so you get the idea here. 
Um, we'll change this one perhaps all the way over here. And we'll do one more. All right, that's good. Now we select all of them. And then we just take the opacity or the pass through value um, and just, you know, maybe hit 50%. And now they're, you know, they're relegated to the background more. They don't, they don't take as much tension away from the important elements, which is are your type elements right here. So this looks great. I really like this approach. Uh, absolutely nothing wrong. And you could still also use this approach if you change the background from this light color to maybe something that's just slightly off white. I, one color I like for this approach, if we change the fill of our layout, is coming around here, um, just in the, the kind of like the orange yellow area, and then just kind of introducing a little bit of color like that. And if you do this, we can then take these card background containers, get rid of the stroke, add a fill, make it white, and now things really stand out a lot more, especially for the type that's sitting on top of it. So that's another approach that you can take. And then finally, we'll have another example. Perhaps you have a background color that is really vibrant, like a vibrant color. Because so far we've only been dealing with white or very light or very dark background colors, but not ones that are saturated with a lot of color. So for instance, let's change this one right here and we'll change this to like a, a blue like this. What's crazy is this actually works without minimal changes. Uh, that's because we've encased uh, our our type in these strong background containers, but the, the the color all contrasts well and still works well. What you want to you would not want to do is take one of these colors, for instance, all right, and make it something like this, where it's really saturated, uh, and ju it just hurts your eyes to look at the contrast between these two elements. So you don't want to do that. This right here is much more pleasing to the eye. There's more color contrast. So understanding color contrast very important and of course like i mentioned before we have a lot more other options that we could utilize here um, for instance we could take these we can get rid of the fill for instance i we can you know you don't even need to see the card container but necessarily we can make this white now these elements are all st standing out way too much at this point so i uh, maybe 25 percent just kind of push them in the background a little bit more that could work. And if you want to see the card container, you can just give them each a stroke. So we'll take these and give a stroke. And we can make it uh, a high contrast, light white stroke like that, if you wish. Again, that's a subjective preference. Um, or you can take the background color and maybe just come out here. It could be a darker stroke. That works. Again, you have a lot of options when it comes to non type based elements or elements that have to be used like icons. And there we go. So as you can see, I uh, you know throughout these you know 12, 13, 15 minutes or whatever it's been, we can create so many iterations uh, of color that work in many different contexts. And whichever you choose is going to be dependent on the brand identity that you're working with. So visual identity design is a very important uh, part of this process when we're dealing with UI design. Um, it's very important when we're dealing with the logos and everything being, you know, having a, a consistent aesthetic in terms of your colors. Uh, that's a very important piece of a brand. So whichever you choose, whichever approach here that you choose, just have to stick with it consistently throughout the entire design, not just the web design or the app design or the UI design, but everything, the packaging, uh, wherever, I. Uh, a logo might be shown like on a billboard, et cetera, et cetera. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that and learned something about color. Now, if you're interested further in learning more about UI UX design, definitely check out my new service, designcourse.com, where you can learn UI UX design in an interactive and fun online setting. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. Make sure to subscribe and I will see you all soon. Goodbye. <laughs>